I've gotta be honest, man. I'm kind of done with Christmas movies. Maybe I'm just jaded because the last couple of years have done very little to reignite my faith in humanity, but even as a kid, I could never really get into them. Like some of the more recent ones like All of the Other Reindeer and Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas, I liked well enough. But nowadays, I can't really watch the classics like How the Grinch Stole Christmas or Frosty the Snowman without getting sugar plumbed induced to diabetes. I think reaching the impending doom known as adulthood has fucked up my sense of childlike wonder because now I can't really see holiday movies as anything but the hyper-commercialized commodity it is. And that's why it took me so long to watch Klaus despite being beautifully animated, critically acclaimed, and nominated for an Academy Award. I thought it was just gonna rehash the same old Christmas rhetoric, like cranky old fuck learns the spirit of Christmas, or ten year old with common sense realizes Santa Claus isn't real, or something like that. And make no mistake, this movie's got cliches to spare, but somewhere down the line, I realized that I didn't care. I was having fun with it. Which is weird, because the plot wasn't exactly filling me with holly jolly, if you know what I mean. Selfish dude is selfish, he meets the almighty Kris Kringle himself, and they spread good cheer across a town that needs it. I mean, it's original enough. Like, a Santa Claus origin story is a pretty dope premise on paper. But this is a movie where pretty much everything rides on the execution. And by god, does this movie literally deliver. How so? Well, let's get the obvious out of the way. This movie is fucking gorgeous, man. Like, I don't know much about Sergio Pablos, but apparently he was all like, well, 2D animation has its technical limits, and 3D animation has been getting stagnant, so I'ma just... Combine them both. They ended up using some inverted paper man trickery where they have hand-drawn animation moving alongside 3D environments. And the final result is that Klaus looks like it was popped right out of a children's storybook. If nothing else, this movie is damn pleasing to the eye. So where does that leave the story? I know I kind of crapped on this movie earlier about being unoriginal or whatever, but that was a little unfair of me. On the contrary, there's actually quite a lot about Klaus, especially the characters, that I found delightfully surprising. Like, take Jesper for example. I see pictures of this dude and immediately I'm like, Oh great, we're going for the adorkable archetype, my favorite. Y'all know what I mean. Young guy, big nose, lanky, socially awkward, aspires for greatness despite being average in every way. DreamWorks and Pixar ruined this character type for me, man. So it gives me great pleasure to say that Klaus is under no illusions. This guy is an ass. He's an obnoxious, entitled priss who shamelessly coasts by on his privileged lifestyle imparted by his daddy. I thought I was gonna get Ian Lightfoot, but I ended up getting Cusco instead. Like, I'm not usually one for schadenfreude, but I'll admit, it was pretty cathartic seeing this brat continuously get his ass handed to him. And to be honest, I find his character arc on being a better person to be a hell of a lot more engaging than a cute dork who's never had to seriously challenge his worldview. Then we have our co-protagonist, Mr. Klaus. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've always preferred stories that portray Santa as the badass mofo he is. And Mr. Klaus is definitely a fresh take on that. Like, he's unmistakably a gentle giant who loves children, but there's no question that this man will fuck you up if you cross him. But beyond that, I appreciate that this version of Santa is just... a dude. Instead of being this immortal, all-seeing, mythical figure, Klaus is just a lonely, broken-hearted man who isn't afraid to throw some snark once in a while. And that extra layer of humanity is precisely what I've always wanted out of a good old Saint Nick story. And yes, I know that Mr. Klaus isn't technically Santa Claus, but that's beside the point. As for the rest of the story, it's cliché to hell and back, as I said, but here's the thing. You don't watch Klaus to see where it goes. You watch to experience the journey it takes to get there. Like, you know Smearenberg's going to get revitalized. You know Jesper's going to get a redemption arc. And you know the bad guys are gonna try and fuck up Santa's toy delivery. But eventually, you stop caring because you're too engrossed by the majesty of it all. For instance, this movie has a huge hard-on for montages, and they really pull out all the stops in the visual storytelling department. Like that one bit where Alva's fish line is incrementally swapped out for school papers? I love details like that. 
Or to give another example, how the movie plays with the Santa Claus mythos. Cause like, this being an origin story, I was wondering how they'd introduce all the various traditions like the coal, the milk and cookies, and the reindeer. But at some point, I had forgotten to look out for it because I was too caught up with the characters and their witty banter and whatnot. So when they do drop the bomb by having Klaus catapult Jesper into a chimney, that's when I was like, there it is! I was waiting for that shit! Suffice to say, these are very well-earned moments. Now, there are a few narrative hiccups along the way. This movie is very... monochromatic, if you know what I mean. It doesn't diminish the story, mind you, just something I think could have been more, uh, tinkered with. What does undercut the story are some of these plot developments that are played just a little too expected and straightforward for my taste. Like that whole friendship breakup scene where Jesper's initial motives are revealed just as he was coming around, I saw that shit coming 100 miles an hour. Also, the whole Capulets versus the Montagues thing didn't really do much for me because their whole reason for fighting was to... keep fighting? I mean, it could have been a metaphor about how traditions can be self-destructive if we don't keep them in check, but still. I think there just needed to be a little more meat to that particular side plot. Other than those ultimately insignificant details, I really can't find any other faults with this movie. It has a solid emotional core, the music score is tremendous, and all the characters leave a lasting impact. From the boatman, to Margu, to Alva, to- Wait, 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 no, no, no. I've got one thing I've got to address here, people. Let me talk about Alva for a sec. Now, I've got no problem with her as a person. First scene, it was very apparent that she was this aggressive, done with everyone shit kind of gal with a hidden heart of gold that looked no less stunning, even with her hair frazzled. Now, those of you that have seen my previous videos can probably surmise that I simmed hard for this woman when I first saw her. And really, I don't think anyone will argue that Alva deserves nothing but the best. No, my real issue is where she ended up. Like, I'm glad she's happy and got to live out her dream, but then she quote-unquote mellowed out and ended up with Jesper because he's the main character, so why wouldn't she? That just unreasonably pissed me off, man. Like, Alva, sweetie, you're a total catch, girl. You could do so much better than that puss cake. Like, no disrespect for Jesper, alright? He ended up being a pretty cool dude. But as a person, he's not exactly... Prime cut material, you know? It's just, I've already had to deal with this guy gets the girl bullshit once with Linguini and Colette. Why do I have to do it again? Did this development really need to happen in this story? Like, come on, man. Okay, okay, enough bitching. My personal grievances aside, Klaus is a Christmas movie for the ages. It's got the usual kid-friendly themes about holiday spirit and giving, not receiving, that I've come to expect. But Klaus is one of the few that I feel earnestly believes in the goodness of people. That the spirit of Christmas really is a joint human effort and not some magic of the season bullshit. Watching this movie reminded me that while people can be fundamentally shitty, they can also be fundamentally altruistic as well. That's why even the normally inappropriate pop songs didn't bother me. Because in today's uncertain times where cynicism seems to be the driving force, a little joy to the world should never be taken for granted. You know, I was gonna sing a Christmas parody about liking, commenting, and subscribing like I'd normally do at the end of these videos, but even I don't have that much shame. Anyway, happy holidays everyone! Thanks for a wonderful first year on YouTube, and until then, stay tuned!